You're listening to The Cultured Bumpkin, a literature podcast with Jake Phillips, where we present audiobook quality readings of the classics for your enjoyment. Thank you for stopping by. And remember, just because you're a bumpkin doesn't mean you can't be cultured. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to Fred. I'm just kidding. I don't know why I said that. Hello and welcome to The Cultured Bumpkin. Big news for me. I just finished the full audiobook of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen in narrated in a southern accent. There are so many wonderful um, versions in British accents. And I thought, you know what? Uh, because I did, I did a, a little short one time on so- social media and I had uh, of, of like the first little chapter, right? And I had lots of people ask me, you should do the whole thing. Like hundreds of thousands of views and things like that. And I had like hundreds, maybe thousands of comments. I think, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I, I did it. I did it on my YouTube Live. I recorded it chapter by chapter. Then I took each one of them, edited them into an audiobook. But it's like, uh, you know, audible style audiobook. And it's on YouTube, the whole thing in a southern accent. Now, I don't think I'm going to post it here because I know a lot of people have the auto download and it's like a 12 hour book and that's a huge file and I don't want to like you know it downloads automatically and then you go to take your picture of your kid and it won't take a picture because you know your phone's full so anyway for now it's just on YouTube but today we've got an excerpt and then I'll link in the uh the show notes where you can you can just go straight to YouTube and listen to the whole thing it's free uh etc but uh, two things. If you do that, one thing that would be a huge help is um, as you're listening, if you come across a, a um, uh, because I haven't done this yet, I, I, I didn't do it in the editing process. And then um, once I upload it, I'm like, oh, I still need to go back and do that. If you listen to it and if you want to, don't feel like you have to. But as you hear chapter whatever, I would love to hear where those are because what I can do is put them in the show notes of the video and then people can navigate it better. Like chapter two is the 13 minute, 14 second mark. Chapter three is the 21 minute, 11 second mark, that kind of thing. So if you want to help me out with timestamps, I would be most appreciative. But of course, no, no worries about that. That's just FYI. If you want to help, it would be a big help. Um, So on to today's excerpt. Um, This is from when Mr. Collins, who, if you've seen the films like the 1995 version or the 2005 version, um, which I love both, by the way, in their own way, right? They're each are so different, and yet they're both so wonderful. Um, Where was I? Yeah, Uh, Mr. Collins is just a great character uh, in the book and in the, the films. So he is a, I don't know... in in the British social hierarchy. I'm not sure what his position would be. He was a a clergyman, but also I'm not sure how he landed in this, uh, like, entail, it's called. But basically, he is coming to the Bennett's house, and he is the heir to it. And um, so he's coming to visit the house uh, to look for a wife from among the Bennett daughters and also to kind of scout the place and see what he's going to inherit. So there's sort of a, a double uh, reason for him coming to visit. And um, anyway, it's just really, it's funny. It's a funny uh, little scene here. And uh, the guy's very, uh, you know, he's kind of pompous and he's kind of, uh, he's not very self-aware. He thinks he's sounding charming when really he's, he comes across as very condescending and um, that kind of thing. Anyway, he's a great character, as are all these Jane Austen characters. Um, but anyway, enough of uh, enough of that. Let's get right to the scene. So, again, this is from about chapter fifteen in Pride and Prejudice. And then, if you like what you hear, you can listen to the whole thing on YouTube. Here you go. Mister Collins was punctual in his time 
and was received with great politeness by the whole family. Mr. Bennett, indeed, said little, but the ladies were ready enough to talk, and Mr. Collins seemed neither in need of encouragement nor inclined to be silent himself. He was a tall, heavy-looking young man of five and twenty. His air was grave and stately, and his manners were very formal. He had not been long seated before he complimented Mrs. Bennett on having so fine a family of daughters, and he had heard much of their beauty but that in this instance fame had fallen short of the truth, and added that he did not doubt her seeing them all in due time disposed of in marriage. This gallantry was not so much to the taste of some of his hearers, but Mrs. Bennet, who quarreled with no compliments, answered most readily, "'You are very kind, I am sure, and I wish with all my heart it may prove to be so, for else they will be destitute enough. Things are settled so oddly.' You allude, perhaps, to the entail of this estate. Ah, sir, I do indeed. It is a grievous affair to my poor girls. You must confess. Not that I mean to find fault with you, for such things I know are all chance in this world. There's no knowing how estates will go once they come to be entailed. I am very sensible, madam, of the hardship to my fair cousins, and could say much on the subject but that I'm cautious of appearing forward and precipitate. But I can assure the young ladies that I come prepared to admire them. At present, I will not say more, but perhaps when we are better acquainted... He was interrupted by a summons to dinner, and the girls smiled at each other. They were not the only objects of Mr. Collins' admiration. The hall, the dining room, and all its furniture were examined and praised and his commendation of everything would have touched Mrs. Bennet's heart but for the mortifying supposition of his viewing it all as his own future property. The dinner, too, in its turn, was highly admired, and he begged to know to which of his fair cousins the excellency of its cooking was owing. But he was set right there by Mrs. Bennet, who assured him with some asperity that they were very well able to keep a good cook and that her daughters had nothing to do with the kitchen. He begged pardon for having displeased her. In a softened tone, she declared herself not at all offended, but he continued to apologize for about a quarter of an hour. Wasn't that fun? That's so fun. It's shocking how well the southern accent uh, marries with British writing. It's so interesting. There's a lot of reasons for that, I think. Um, you know, because you have the South as the Bible Belt, and um, a lot of the time you have these uh, rednecks that had nothing in their library except a King James Bible from, you know, the 1600s, and so even though they're maybe uneducated in a lot of ways, their speech and their reading style and their even their accent was uh, formed by uh, the King James Bible. If you were, you know, had a little money, maybe you had some Shakespeare, um, that kind of thing. But Southern, this Bible Belt Southern fits British writing so well. And it's just fascinating. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you're new, I would love it if you'd subscribe uh, here and over on YouTube where the whole audiobook is. And uh, if you have any ideas for where I could put it, that it wouldn't be a bother. I don't know if I'm going to start a new podcast. And it won't be a podcast, just sort of set the whole thing in it. I don't know what I'm going to do. But for now, it's on YouTube. If you have any ideas, feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening. You've been listening to The Cultured Bumpkin, a literature podcast with Jake Phillips. Thank you very much for listening. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, would you mind going and subscribing? And leaving a nice review on whatever podcast platform podcast platform you heard this on. I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time.